we're going to do an osteochondral plug. Uh, so this is there's obviously two ways of doing an osteochondral graph. One is uh, with the instrumented technique with uh, a plug, and then the other one is a shell, which is much more of a hand shaped uh, type graph. But this is the easier uh, method. So um, this is the sort of set that you need, um, and we'll go through the bits and bobs. But um, it's all very instrumented, and it's it's relatively straightforward. So who, who, this who, is a hemicondyl. This who, is what you would uh, normally get. It's usually in a bit better shape than this. But um, yeah, you would have sent the scans off. You would have tried to obtain a match uh, to the uh, donor in terms of the radius of curvature and so that you can get a nice uh, fit. Now, it depends on the defect. The smaller the defect, the less important that is. And probably the cutoff somewhere between 20, 22 mil, something like that where it doesn't really matter so much where you take the defect from or the donor uh, plug from or what size the model is. But um, essentially what you're trying to do is replace the exact plug relative to the defect on the knee with from the same location from the, the donor. So this is our defect here that we've created. You use one of these cylinders, I've already measured it's 20 mil. And what you don't want to do is put this flat on the condor perpendicular to the defect, making sure that it's completely covered. And then once you're happy with the position, then you hold the knee there. It's a bit wobbly. Then you want to put your wire in, and then just double check that you're happy, again, that you've uh, fully covered the, the defect. So we're going to do that fine. and got a little bit of overhang on things, so I would probably reposition that if you like. But Martin, who's, whose equipment are you using there? What, what's the set? This is the Allosource or JRF uh, kit. So I'm just going to reposition this. Uh, and there's obviously uh, there's an Arthrex one as well. And they're roughly the same, essentially. So yeah, I'm just repositioned that because it was overhanging a little bit into the notch, but uh, we'll accept that. OK, so then I'm going to turn this over, and this has got a cut edge, and this is uh, going to give me a cut surface, a cartilage. Like that. And then I'm going to drill it. Have you got the drill? So this is yeah, the drill here. Uh, to show you. Here we go. And it's got the measurements on the side. Now, ideally with the allograph, the less bone, the better. So the depth's but changed recently, hasn't it? It used to be a lot deeper. What, what sort of depth are you aiming for? So there's no hard and fast rules. It depends what you're doing. So you can go up to 10, but it's not ideal. If you have to go more than 10, you probably want to take some autologous bone and bone graft the defect. Um, or ideally, I would normally go down to about 7. So that would give me somewhere in the region of five um, five bone, and then I got two cartilage. That's an interesting rig that you've got there with that bit of wood. I like it. It <laughs> is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> really stable. I'm thinking about getting one. <laughs> so that measures about eight mil on there, so that would be okay. Right. Then uh, one of the wire. No, I'm gonna give that a wash. Okay, so we're not quite sharp edge the cartilage, so you can just go around and just cut that to make sure you get a nice uh, defect. Similarly on the pot here. In, in terms of ordering in just a plug, what's what size the companies offer you on that? So if you want a pre pre made plug, yeah. then it's my four ups gone. I think sixteen mil is the largest that they currently do. Um, is, and then that's where it gets into the sort of size matching, because once you get above that, then you need to uh, sort of have a, a properly matched donor for you, so that um, the radius of curvature is the same. So obviously, in this patient, the radius of curvature is not the same, because we've taken a hemicondyl from another cadaver. And right, in, so I'm going to move this wire. In terms of logistics, Martin, this surgery has to done, be done within 21 days of... Uh, oh, yeah, so the way it usually works is you send the scan off, 
and then I have um, yeah, I've sent the scan off, and I wait for a match. So then you get a text or an email, uh, and that they usually say then that um, uh, right, we have a potential graft offer. They'll give you the dimensions of the graft of your donor, the dimensions of the offer. You decide if you accept the tolerances. If you accept the tolerances, then you have usually somewhere between seven to 14 days to implant the other because it has an expiration date and that needs to be about 28 days, but it takes roughly two weeks or so to get all the bacteriology and serology back off the patient. Sorry, I got the thing. Right, so yeah, so ideally you want to get the uh, same position on the allograft. You put it in the clamp and then and you, you can use various anatomical landmarks, but the easiest one is often the notch. So the top of the notch equates to the top of the defect in this one, and you can reference, and then you would do exactly the same on the on the donor, so that's roughly the the top. It's a bit controversial why you should use pen on articular cartilage, but I generally do. Um, so yeah, so that's ref so I've referenced that. That roughly is in the same location. And you put the ring on here. You obviously don't want to use the wire like you did in the last one because you would put a hole in your cartilage. So you uh, So we are going to use these pins to stabilize our aura. And there's no, there's no other, other than eyeballing the notch, there's no other kind of templates that you can use to guide you to, to sort of taking the right bit to match the bit. No, you just have to use the anatomical right. landmarks. Like I said, there is a bit of uh, eyeballing with this surgery, but this is as instrumented as it gets. Uh, if you're doing a shell allograft, it's complete eyeball. Right. So, right, so then you've got the Cora. This is the, oh, sorry, just trying to get that picture. That's the Cora that's going to take out the defect. Um, and the thing with this is, again, you're trying to limit cartilage injury. So you want constant, um, sorry, big heads in the way. No, we've got a great uh, You want constant uh, water to try and protect your chondrocytes and limit any cell death because, yeah. And is there a certain sort of, you know, you, you've got that going fairly low. Presumably you do as little. So you don't. You just go all the way down with this one. Low speed? You're going to sort out the depth later. Oh, okay. But low speed? So that's that. Then pin puller. Yeah, low speed. So that's our, our plug. Get these out. And then you got swords. Then you have to cut out your plug. This is where health and safety goes out the window. Yeah, watch those fingers, Martin. <laughs> okay. We've got the opposite on. Oh, there we go. Come on. Right, so there's uh, the plug. Now, what we should have done, which I didn't do, um, is we should have marked, so that's where it's come from there. But what we should have done is we should have marked which is north, south, east and west on it. And then, because then we want to put the same location. There we go. We want to put the same location in the, um, in the thing. So that's where it fits in there. So I'm just going to put, so, Sorry, north, but well, you just want a north. You need to orientate it, basically. So you need to know which side is up. Do you soak it in vancomycin, then, like Henry was saying, with the, uh, you know, with the fresh allografts? Do and then we want... Uh, I try and avoid the vancomycin, to be honest, with the allograft, just because uh, you just, I, uh, there's already antibiotics in the media comes in, so I don't think you need any more. OK. Then you have to measure the depth of your defect. So this is my uh, ruler. You want to do that at all four corners. So that is eight, and then that is seven, and then that is sorry, eight, and then 
that's the Uh, yeah, it's six on that side. So yeah, so then you you mark that like that, and then you have to try and replicate that one here. But then you have this device um, that's gonna hold it while you cut it. So we get a ruler back. What's that piece gone? It's gone. Okay. Yeah, so this is a little piece. So we have to measure that onto that. So eight, eight, seven, and six. But the top, it's eight, so there, and seven. And you just want to join up those dots. How many of these are you doing, Martin? Uh, you know, in a in say a twelve so month. I period. don't do, to be honest, too many of these. So I, I actually tend to do more severe defects. So this would be a very small one. So most of mine are actually shell allografts. So I'm actually pre-shaping these by hand um, and it's usually in people with massive either traumatic or osteochondritis uh, these so there's like 30 the co cool condyles missing basically and um, so just because i started doing these maybe five six years ago i when we first did it we had to apply for funding to individual funding requests and as a consequence my hospital has made me continue to do that and so you only end up sort of applying for the sort of really serious ones because it's a bit of a logistical uh, effort to, to do it. And uh, I do about one a month, probably, of the big ones. But so, yeah, so there I've lined up the, uh, if you can see that, sorry, I've lined up the this tool with the, the line. Um, and that's, so that's the depth. I'm going to cut that accordingly. So that's flat, and then that should be your graph, basically. And then it's often good just to take the sharp edges off so it'll just go in. Ideally, you don't really want to have to get this out again. <laughs> if it, Once it's in, you want it to stay in. If it, if it does is, feel a, li a little bit, you know, not fixed as well as you would like, is, how, how would you supplement the press fit? Yeah, if it, if it doesn't feel as good as I want, then um, you can um, uh, then put like a little, I put a little smart nail in or something like that, a little PLA dart to, to stabilize it, and you can put two or three in there if you want. Now, so that seems to, yeah, so that's going to fit, I think. So I'm putting that line at 12 o'clock. And then I did, they give you this tamp, but you really don't really want to tamp it uh, because again you're going to cause chondrocyte death so ideally you just want some pressure we don't want to push this off the <laughs> off yeah. the block yeah <laughs> looks like you're now, doing it's a little bit raised on the top it's fine around the side but i'm just gonna so now i've got a little tap it because i'd rather I'd rather not do this, but it's better to do that now than leave it sort of proud. Okay, so that fits pretty well. It's um, it's not a great match in terms of the radius of curvature, but that's because the donor 
had a much bigger width on there than the the um, than the actual recipient. So that's where the tw 20 is the sort of watershed area. That's why the premier dowels only go up to 16 because they don't really match. You don't need to match them at that point. But once you get into those bigger ones, that you need to match it, and the bigger you go, the more critical it is to match it. And what what do you what do you accept? Line to line, this one. What, what, do, what, what do you accept, leeways. Martin? It's very stable. Tolerances-wise, what do you accept? You, you mentioned that you look at the tolerances of the donor. Uh, I, so usually they, they're very good, the guys, so they usually give you um, within one to two millimetres. A bit like a meniscus, really. Fantastic. That's brilliant. If you, um, yeah, if you're a little bit worried, often on the donor as well, the cartilage is a little bit thicker, so you can always sort of trim it a little bit to like the side there because the radius is curved there, then I would usually just sort of like trim that to make it, to chamfer it and make it there, basically. 